John Swales, you're standing as a Reform UK candidate in the, the Harrogate by-election for Stray Woodlands and Hookstone. Um, why, why have Reform decided to field a candidate? Right, good question. Well, Reform are a relatively new political party in the UK. They're growing very quickly, very strongly. Membership's increasing by the day. Um, we believe in basically a small state and personal freedoms. Uh, we're standing candidates in every seat in the general election. We're also standing candidates um, to sit on local councils because we believe that by having representation on local councils is the only way we can start to change things and start to influence decision making in the country to reflect what the people want rather than what national government decide they want to do on a particular day on a particular topic. And um, I think many people have followed Reform UK well over a number of years really but particularly of, of recent you know we've seen particularly like Richard Tice and we've seen many um, Conservative MPs, if you like, or a number of Conservative MPs, uh, move across to reform. So they've seen a, a picture of a growing uh, following, if you like, on the national reform UK scene. What's what's happening in in Harrogate? Is it a small group or a developing group? Where where is the local? And for, thank you. Very much a growing group. We've got over 500 members in Harrogate and growing by the day. Um, we've got at least 50 of those are active members and by that I mean they attend meetings and social functions we have, they're out campaigning for us, um, delivering leaflets, putting posters and uh, po posts in the gardens um, and really spreading the word because I think that's one of the most important things that they can do is to talk to their friends um, and answer questions really because people obviously a lot of people know reform, a few people don't, they don't know what, what we stand for, what, what positions we've got, they don't understand that we are really representing them and their country. Um, and those conversations are quite powerful, in fact they're the most powerful thing we can do, so we've got a large membership in Harrogate and it's growing. And, and when you look at the, the policies and all the manifesto kind of items for reform, I suppose this is more of a, on a sort of the national picture, I think there's a tendency to sort of view that one and I think this is possibly true at one time there was you know a focus around immigration um, and Brexit but I know things have moved on much more from from you know that was a number of years ago um, where, where is the party with its sort of manifesto and telling people what it's going to do well we're not publishing a manifesto per se we have a number of policies well-developed policies that have been well considered and argued with a lot of experts in the country on the economy on defense education health police all well developed um, but what we've produced is a contract a contract between reform and the people it's a 10 page document it's available on the website it's available on our local website and it just explains in detail what we're going to do on all those key areas immigration is one of the areas of course because it is an issue that, that needs to be managed and needs to be managed responsibly and properly um, and also all of these pledges in our contract are costed and by reducing the size of the state not a lot but just cutting out waste and inefficiency we can deliver the pledges in our contract to the people and still save a few billion pounds a year and you and you term it like a contract whereas I think in, in the past we've seen um, I suppose you'd call it like over commitment wouldn't you in manifesto items and I think I think the public is very wary of what they're being promised at the moment more when we're coming up to a general election is that more of a you know like an agreed deal if you like then with the general public is that is that why it's been termed a contract well exactly I mean a contract has a, has a legal meaning you know if you're of two parties to a contract then you both have obligations to each other whereas a manifesto is just some words on a piece of paper or in particular promising everybody everything all the time to get their votes when none of it's costed out properly and it's all based on spurious assumptions about something that may or may not happen in the future and as we know the, the country is significantly in debt at the moment the cost of servicing that debt does inhibit our ability to do a lot of things so we have to sort out the economy uh, as well as all the other things defense education the nhs roads locally an issue and then just just sort of turn into the to the local campaign and, you, and yourself then what what makes you the the right person to stand then do you believe for for a councillor in the, in the <coughs> division yes another good question 
uh, I'm Harrogate born and bred. I was born on Leeds Road, uh, lived here all my life. My, my father and my grandparents had local businesses which I've worked in. So I know Harrogate, I know what makes it work, I know what it stands for. I know it's got a unique identity and a culture and that's something I want to preserve. So, for example, I'm not in favour of expanding a water bottling plant to cut down the pine woods that I used to play in when I was little. I'm not in favour of destroying the middle of town to put in something called a gateway project, which doesn't appear to do anything apart from put a bicycle lane up the busiest road to the middle of town, destroying the character of the town yet again. So I stand for keeping Harrogate as Harrogate and not turning it into some sort of quasi city that the planner, the central planners want to do. Cycle lanes across the strait, I'm against those. The new tiger crossing at the side of the strait, I'm against that. I just don't see that we need them. And when you when you look at those projects then, um, do, do you see a level of sort of consideration for why they're needed? I, mean, I know we, we, there's a lot sort of, I think the, the term used a, a lot is active travel, which is a new term that seems to have been created really over the last couple of years yes or been put mm -hmm. out there a, a lot more um, and, and there seems to be a lot of around those schemes it's sort of divided Harrogate as well um, what's your kind of take on what it's done to Harrogate as a community then? well uh, the, the concept of the active travel schemes is a central government drive um, which is basically forced onto the councils because they, it's the only way they can access funding. They have a lot of schemes that they, they will have want to, to bring in over the years. Now funding is primarily available for these active travel schemes, so they are repackaging a number of old schemes as if they were brand new ones to get active travel funding. So they're basically coming up with projects just to get the funding rather than talking to the local people and asking them what their issues are and what the solution is. Oh yes, they'll have a consultation which, to be perfectly honest, it, it is worse than useless because it's counterproductive because they know the answer to the consultation before they do it. So I think it's much more important to look at what the local people want and then secure funding for those projects than to just get something built because the government will give you money for it. Yeah. And the, the councillor role, is, is, I think it's very interesting that obviously you a councillor is voted in to represent the people in the division, but you also, in a way, represent the division uh, on the area committee for the council, and then you also, if you like, represent Harrogate with um, the county council. Yes. So it's a whole kind of cascade of, of uh, accountability, really. Is, is there a particular approach that you'd adopt to representing people on all those, those forums? I know that's a big, a big question. Well, I think I would, I would use my knowledge of Harrogate and what I like to think is common sense to get some common sense into the policy making and the decision making to do things in the interests of the people of Harrogate and the division in particular, uh, rather than, as I said earlier, central government diktats being rolled down and forced onto people. So I will be pushing back on things that the people of Harrogate don't want and supporting the things that they do. Um, on the the odd thing is you may say, oh, it's only one person. Well, there was actually a reform councillor on the council already, so if we elect another one, that's two. The Conservative Party don't actually have control of the council anymore, so those two or three votes that we have can actually make the decision, can actually force the decision in a certain direction because nobody has overall control. So don't think that there's only two or three of us because we can actually call, call yeah. these decisions on projects. And then just looking at... And just to finish up talking about your campaign, <clears throat> how's your campaign going? Have you got a particular approach that you're adopting to, you know, to make people aware of you? Yeah, well, we, we've got a, a multimedia campaign. So we've got the tr traditional campaigning, leafleting, um, talking to people. I was, ca I was out at the weekend talking to a number of people. Everyone was very happy to take the leaflet. Some people wanted to know more. Some people even saying, oh, I used to vote Conservative, but I just can't do it anymore. I don't recognise them anymore. I'm going to vote Reform. You've definitely got my vote. So that was very heartening. Um, and we've got a poster campaign starting this weekend. But we've also gone for social media. So we're quite active on Facebook. I think we've got, uh, the, we've got a guy managing the Facebook account for us, we've got 4,000 followers on that. We just set up a TikTok account, put some short form videos up on that, and uh, just blown away. Our first video 
uh, we're amateurs, we'll admit it, but we're just trying to do the best we can. Um, 40,000 views and rising, so absolutely blown away about that. So we're sort of coming at it through a multi-channel way, really. I, I'm not certain that um, some of the other candidates have taken advantage of all of those channels to get through to potential voters. And is there, just to finish up then, is there anything that, that I, I could have asked you that you felt I should have? It's always a tricky one to put to a, yes, <laughs> someone on an interview. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not so much focused on, on me, I'm more focused on the campaign and the change that we can bring um, and also, you know, it's down to all the people who've, who've joined us, who are so enthusiastic and so committed. It's really heartening to see. So um, the only other thing I could ask is to say thank you to them. John Swales, thank you very much. Thank you.